Hello, hi guys. So in this video, let us look into threads in more details. So both in C and C++. The concept remains the same both in C and C++. And here you can see what I'm trying to convey you is thread is not a thread, but it is a process. So basically how it works is internally thread is being created using a process. So it is kind of a fork, but it is not a fork. So let us look into that one, how it works internally. For that, what I'll do is, so let me create a sample program. So I'll say, I should include, I'll create a thread. I have a int mean and I'll have a return zero to tell to the OS that I exited properly. That means successful. So then let me create thread. So I'll call this one as a T1 and I'll give a Lambda expression for this. And here what I'll do is I'll put while of one purposefully. I want uh, this one to consume all of my CPU. This is my purpose. So then what I'll do is I'll copy this one and I'll paste it over here. I'll call this one as T2. So then have to wait, right? So in order to wait, I need to say T1.join and T2.join. So here what happens is as soon as an instance of T1 is getting created, so this that means this std thread itself is a class. As soon as a new instance is getting created, automatically this Lambda expression is running continuously in a separate thread. Similarly for T2. And now let us go and execute this one. I'll say G++ test.cpp head out out. So it is uh, executing properly since I have not given any uh, std out or something. So it is uh, not printing anything. So let me analyze this one. So for that, like what I'll do is I'll open one more terminal and I'll say hyphen E capital L F. Then I'll try to grip for a dot out. Now here you can see have three a dot outs. So that means it is a three process, right? So here you can see all these guys are sharing the same process ID. So here uh, double uh, one double five seven three is a process ID and one double five seven three is a thread ID basically. And here you can see have a three process, but all this three process is having a same process ID. But here you can see the parent process is having double five seven three as a thread ID, but the child process is having 74 and 75. This is called a thread ID. So what I'm trying to say is this is a parent process A dot out. It has spanned two other processes, but with the same process ID, but a different thread ID. Whenever I try to print a process ID inside this child process, child threads, right? So then it obviously prints the same process ID. Then what is happening internal? So before that one, let me execute one more thing called head stop. So let me execute this head stop. And also here you can see there is a tree structure over here. So if you don't get this tree structure, what you have to do is you have to click on this F, uh, F2, this setup. Then you can go to this display option. Then you have to enable this tree view. So then only it will show. So then I'll click on this done. So I'm trying to use this mouse. So do not use this uh, function key. Sometimes the head stop is having some bug. It is not working fine. So here I'll scroll down and here can you see? So here it shows in a tree structure, the parent and the child relationship. So here you can see the first process is a init process. It has span the init process. So then from this init process, I got this bash. And inside of this bash, my a dot out is running. This is my child process, right? For this bash. So then this a dot out here, you can see it is having double five, seven, three, seven, four, and seven, five. These are all the thread ID. But here you can see this is called a PID. I don't know. There is a, some, some reason this head stop command is showing thread ID as a PID. Basically it is a thread ID. 73, 74, and 75. These three are the three process, which is running with the same process ID. The process ID for all these three process is nothing but one double five seven three and here you can see the hierarchy so this is a parent process and it has invoked two child process that is a dot out and also here you can observe line number nine uh core number nine and core six is completely consuming because i have put a while of one in the threads so that means you no need to bother about the number of cores which is present in your system so automatically a thread modeling in C++ is automatically taken care of, or basically a thread modeling inside your OS, OS is automatically taken care. 
so it will allocate each thread to some random cores so uh, in my system i have basically a 16 cores so in order to see that 16 cores now you can see nproc whenever you type nproc now you have a 16 core so this is nothing but uh, have only eight cores but the 16 cores is nothing but a logical course so let's not get deeper into that one the only the idea is so your cpu is automatically your cores are automatically being selected and it is completely consuming your process that is what i want to say then how it works internally so in order to do that one what we have to see is we need to see about this man page so how internally thread works is using this clone method so internally the thread invokes this clone system call the clone is similar to your fork so let me increase a little bit font so clone is similar to a fork but only difference is whenever you execute fork right so from then onwards the even both parent and child continues but with respect to clone only the function continues not the parent process so i'll come to that one later with some sample examples okay so this is what the manual page you need to look into and here the clone takes a first one is a function pointer so which is nothing but the function which you want to run inside a separate thread or nothing but a separate process so this is the function which takes a void pointer and returns an integer this integer tells how your child process exited and the second one is like a stack pointer you need to create your own stack and you need to supply a starting address of the stack then this is where the magic happens so this is where all your flags are present so by this plan by this flag you can control like whether you want to share the virtual memory whether you want to share the uh, file descriptor table file information and all those things you can specify using these flags and this arcs is nothing but the argument which you want to pass to this thread function if you have some function some arguments which you want to share to this thread so then you can use this arc then rest everything is a comment so as of now you forget about this one so now what i'll do is let me create some c program using this clone which i have already created so let us not take more time so that's why i already created this program so this is a simple implementation of a thread so what i did is i did not do anything rocket science so i went to the end of the page and here where they are given a sample so here this sample is uh, nothing but like setting a host name some host group so they are creating a child and they are assigning some host group to that one so but my use case is little bit different so i want to create a thread so here you can see they are using a new uts and a, a signal child so this is what they want to handle but in my case it is different so i little bit modified this one so here let us go deep into this one so the first thing is like i am creating a pointer that points to the start of a stack and also i am making as a stack top so this is the end of the stack buffer so here the name says it is a stack uh, top but basically since the stack grows downwards so i made this one as a stack top okay then this is a process id then what i'm doing is i'm creating some memory using a m map so what this m map does is it will allocate a virtual memory with the size whatever you have specified so here you can see this m map i had given and the first argument is a null so that means whenever you say null the os arbitrarily take the starting address of the memory so i don't want to specify the starting address of that so that's why i had given this one as a null and the second one is a what is the size of your stack so here you can see i specified 1024 into 1024 which is nothing but a 1 mb right i am giving a 1 mb of space for my stack so for that stack i am giving a read and write access so this is a protection so this is a read and this is write then i am saying there is a third argument this is called a private so here you can see so there is a address and there is a length and there is a protection and there is a flag and what this flag tells is whenever i say map private means so whatever the virtual memory it is going to create so some virtual memory it going to create right so that memory is a private so that means for example you can open a file and you can give a file descriptor as a uh, wherever this minus one is there no so here you can give a file descriptor but if you try to modify the memory with that file descriptor or with the memory which you received in this pointer no so it not it will be not modifying your file so in order to make that one you need to make this one as a map private so then the map anonymous is you are telling i am not giving the file descriptor so here you can see i am using minus one so if you are specifying this one as a minus one 
you need to give map underscore anonymous. If you are not giving this map underscore anonymous, no, you have to specify some of the file descriptor. So you need to open some file and you need to give this file descriptor over here. So if you don't give this one, if you give minus one, then the uh, memory map will fail. And the last argument is you are saying the map stack. So that means you are using this one for a stack. So that is what that one. And the last one is an offset. So I'm giving this one as a zero. So now this one will create a stack. So this one will basically create some memory, a virtual memory, and it gives a pointer for me. And since the stack is growing on the downwards, so I need to say stack plus stack size. So that means I'm all the way going to the end of the stack. So that which is nothing but a stack top. So it is like other way. So that's why the name is stack top. So now what I'm doing is the stack top, I'm, I have a pointer which is pointing to the end of the stack. Then here I need to set the buffer std out null. So what I'm doing is I'm disabling the buffer for a printf. So sometimes this printf does not print directly onto the console. Basically, it will uh, push everything into a buffer. Sometimes automatically, once the buffer is full, automatically it has been flushed to your console. I don't want to do that one because in a multi-thread environment, you may uh, see some undesired uh, result. So I want to print as soon as whenever you call a printf. That is what it is. Then here where the magic happens, you are calling a clone method. So this is a system API and you need to pass this child function. So what is this child function doing is, so here you can see it is a normal function. So which is taking a void argument and here where I'm sleeping inside this function. And here I'm printing, I'm inside of the child thread and also I'm printing a thread ID of this child using get TTID. And also I'm printing a process ID, uh, which is nothing but a, a parent ID since it is both are sharing the same thing. No? So I am making this one as a parent ID. So then I'm sleeping for some time. So then what I'll do is I'll call this clone method and I'll pass first argument as a function pointer of this child function. And the second argument is a stack address you need to give the stack pointer. So that is nothing but a bottom of my stack since the stack grows downwards. So it is the other way. I'm giving a stack top and I'm passing the clone flags. So then at last I'm passing this one as a null. So this is the argument where you can pass to uh, your function pointer. So here, I'm not using any of the arguments. So that's why I'm making this one as a null. So as soon as this clone is executed, right? So this is where the difference between fork and clone comes into picture. As soon as the clone is executed, this function started executing in a different process. But as soon as if you make this one as a fork, you have two process running from this point onwards. So what happens is as soon as you fork, a parent process also started executing from here onwards and also the same thing for a child. Child also started executing from here onwards. But it, with respect to the clone, it is not like that. The child started executing from this function. So it is not using the uh, parent process. It does not execute from here. And another important thing is, so here where the magic happens, so whenever you are creating a thread. So in this clone flags, what I'm telling is, set the virtual memory. So I'm saying that, share the virtual memory from both the parent and the child. So that means parent and child should use the same virtual memory and should also use the same file system information and also the file descriptor and also the uh, signal handler. And also I'm saying clone thread. So set to add to the same thread group. So I'm saying add the parent and the child to the same thread group. And here where I'm setting a thread ID and here I'm handling this signal. So I'm controlling this signal child. So these are all the control flags which you can pass through the pass to the clone basically. So once the clone is executed, no. So here I am printing the PID, the process ID of the child. So basically here where you can see the process ID of a parent and the child both are same. So then it is only a simple uh, some print statement where I'm printing a thread ID and process ID both in a parent as well. Then here where you can see it's a wait PID. So it's a process, right? So I need to wait for this process to finish. So that is where I'm saying it's a wait PID. So now what I'll do is I'll go here. I'll do a control C and I'll compile this one main.c. Once if I compile and execute, now here you can see clone has been called and it has written 16803. So this is what this is a child process ID, right? So then it is waiting for the thread to finish execution. 
and a thread is started which is nothing but a child process i am inside the child thread and here you can see the thread id is nothing but 16803 so which is nothing but a id which is written from the clone so which is nothing but a child process id which is nothing but a child thread id and here you can see i am printing a parent process id which is nothing but 16802 then i am inside this parent and the parent thread id is 16802 which is nothing but same as a process id so here where you can see the process id and thread id both are same in parent but it is different in child so the child parent id is one uh, this is 802 and 803 so then what we'll do is we'll try to simulate the same thing so let me put a while of one in both the places so what i'll do is i'll put a um, while of one so here i'm putting a while of one in this child so let me put a while of one here as well so here you can see ps hyphen elf it is printing two ids and here i'll go and check so uh, so yeah the child so in this child 17030 is a child one right so here where you can see so this is a thread id of a child and uh, this is a thread id of a parent and also let me go and use a htop and let me go can you see here core number 8 and core number 6 is con completely consuming a lot of time so here you can see this is a parent process and this is a child process so here you can see the uh, a dot out is been uh, a child and here you can see 17030 so this is a thread id of a child so what this proves is so internally whenever you do thread dot join so what what does it mean so it is nothing but a wait of a pid right so, and also this clone is a one system api so which you can use in order to create a thread so that is what internally it is happening hope you like this video guys so if you like this video please share and subscribe thank you